so it's good everyone you're back with Aaron's Urban Exploring and today we have a great adventure for you guys we're currently at the side of the River Irwell at Clifton Marina we're going to check out a downcast siphon which was carved out over 200 years ago by James Grimley which uh, ran water out of the mine pits at Wet Earth Colliery I'll uh, give you a closer look and more info as we go in but check this out guys right we are in the downcast siphon just you can see how pitch black it is get my torch on a big light that's better just look at the carvings hand picked over 200 years ago Look at that. Oh, there. <laughs> Look at all the sandstone just carved out. I think this is the outcast siphon, siphon which would have let water out. People have been here recently. Got footprints. Just look at the old beams what have been here. There's the thing up there. Wow, it's mad, isn't it? Look above you. This would have been like a, a sluice gate or something, wouldn't it? Wow, it's mad. Look at the carvings. Look at how all of that wood is, it looks like it's burnt. Keep that um, finger pointed in front of you. Yeah, we've got our gas meter, which is currently beeping away. There's no gas at the minute, so we're all good. Whoa. Oh, shit. <laughs> that sinks out, watch out. But, the... We think is the collapsed tunnel. That would have been like a sluice gate, wouldn't it? This is clear as it is. There's another one. Would have had a big wooden beam in here to let water out, I think. Look at that. Let's look at the brickwork. But I will give you more information on this as we get further along. Wow. Look at that, it's full of water. I might even do a part four. I'll bring me um underwater submarine and see what we can see underneath there's a beam there it looked like it would have had a sluice gate again wow it's crazy this place but i think this would have gone towards i don't know it's hard to tell when you're inside which way everything goes That way is the collapsed tunnel, isn't it? Wow. Look at that. Over 200 years, not a lot of people know about this, even being here. Where's the 
there's another tunnel that way. Is that where we just come? Hey. Which way do we come? <laughs> that way. I'm lost. <laughs> yeah, we come that way, don't we? Right. So we make our way through the. I think this way would have come towards the old water treatment plant that's blocked off at the top where they cut into the tunnels. And you watch this step here. So yeah, there's bricks up at the bottom here. And uh, the water treatment would have cut it off and tapped into the tunnels. Let's look at all that. I'm mad. Yeah, I won't come in here on my own. That's why it took me so long to get in here. So we've just been to the end of this tunnel which would have led towards the water treatment where we're just heading back. I'm going to go the other direction. Just look at the brickwork, it's like over 200 year old. And Ma Matthew Fletcher, who owned the mines at the time, he needed a way to get water out of the mines, hence why it's called wet earth cholera. Oh, and it slips on my arse there. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> well, just look at that. Amazing. I know. <laughs> Why is it come? Is it come through? A little bit, yeah. I think Yeah. I think that that way would have gone towards under the River Irwell to the up, up, up cast siphon which would have ran down a feeder stream or should I say the feeder stream ran down and emptied the water out of the wet earth power I'll give you a, a close look at that after we've been here you would have seen it on part one of the wet earth power Sorry about that guys, I ran out of storage on my phone, I had to do a bit of deleting. That's where we come, and that is pretty much the tunnels. That would have gone to the upcast. It's crazy, I'm boiling in here, me and you. Yeah. <laughs> that is pretty much the tunnels, isn't it? Old beams. I've had like doors or something. Yeah, like as well. Yeah, look at how mud and everything. Just look at that. Yeah, we're gonna make our way back out. Yeah. 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 Look at that. It's gonna be that for me, mate, I think. Maybe pop in tune. Got sandstorm. Crazy there. Yeah, I'll get some cinematics with some decent pictures of this place because it's just amazing. I'll give you all the information on this place properly. That is the tunnels. Which is not far but they are underground. 
and they are over 200 year old hand carved through the rock you can see all the pick marks and stuff Wet Earth Colliery was a coal mine located on the Manchester coal field. The colliery site is no location of Clifton Country Park. It has been a unique place in British coal mining history. Apart from being one of the earliest pits in the country, it is the place where engineer James Brimley made water run uphill. Around the area of Knob End shows evidence of early bell pits and small ladder pits. The first deeper workings was by owner of the Clifton Estate, John Heathcote. The Wet Earth Colliery was begun in 1751 which ran into technical difficulties and he had to call on the help of Matthew Fletcher. Jacob Fletcher, a mine owner from Bolton, had several mines in Harwood, Breitman, Bolton and Averton. He had two sons, John and Matthew. John was responsible for sinking a pit in Averton whilst Matthew took up on mining engineering. John Eathcote was having problems with the pit and called on Matthew Fletcher to help sink a new shaft. The new shaft was sunk 80 metres to the seam at a point which became the central focus of the wet earth complex. The workings were plagued with water which entered from the river Irwell. Eathcote asked Matthew Fletcher to advise him how to solve the flooding but it seems it was unsuccessful. John closed the pit in 1750. Heathcote and Fletcher were at a loss as how to remove the water from the pit until it became to the attention of James Brimley. A relative of Heathcote was an engineer whose feats included the Bridgewater Canal, the Trent and Mersey Canal and later Chester Canal as well as the Hercastle Tunnel. The problem of water level was solved by building a weir upstream on the River Irwell. As it flowed southeast at Ringer Fall to create a head of water higher than the pit head. Drawing water from the east side of the Irwell, Brunner then drove a tunnel 800 yards long through the shale and sandstone across a large bend in the river as far as Giant Seat. By this point, the river crossed the Pendleton Fault where it curved 180 degrees to flow northwest and has begun to curve back to resume southeast of the coast past the wet earth colliery. At Giant Seat, Brunner drove two shafts into the sandstone. An adit was also driven from the northern shaft to the riverbank allowing the tunnel to be flushed when needed. Brimley connected the shafts with a 73 yard tunnel under the river forming an inverted siphon. At the top of the southern shaft an open leak or head race was dug south east along the west bank of the river Irwell. The small feeder can now flow 235 yards until just past the wet earth colliery and sharply west to enter the mine through a short tunnel entering the pumping chamber. Right next to the pit head, the water turned a 23 foot diameter wheel that powered a nodding donkey or pump jack. The water pumped out of the mine then excited along with the tail race through another tunnel back into the river railway. Construction started in 1752 and the scheme was completed in 1756. It was so successful that the basic components remained in use for 170 years. The original water wheel replaced by a water turbine in 1867. Pretty much the end of the video if you enjoyed this one hit the thumbs up hit the like and subscribe to the channel so you do not miss out on more exploring from aaron's urban exploring peace out